Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the Savior, and I'm going to have to apologize in advance. I hope my mic is actually recording this, because it didn't make a little, like, beep sound or whatever. But, um, oh, actually, I think I know why. The volume was on mute. Let's see if that changes it. Okay. Well, yeah, but, um, just to make sure to stay. Hey, what's up? Comic95, the Savior. Long story short, uh, I was just looking through my phone and I realized that a person that I had like planned to do an interview with and I decided to cancel without giving, you know, notice, proper notice, if you will, this nigga sent me a text message, a completely unprofessional text message. Let me read what this nigga said to you, or said to me, and then I'll explain why he said it. So I'll explain why I didn't do the interview and why he said what he said. So this message is from Zach, aka Colonizer Chris. So he says, shall I take this as a removal of the interview process? This is from uh, Friday, October 21st, FYI. Then he says, after that, there's another message about 20 minutes later. If you are not going to come to the interview, you should have had the moral decency to cancel. I took time out of my busy day for you. I could have used this time to interview a viable candidate. You are immature and selfish for not caring enough to cancel. So many things wrong with the message that you sent. But before I go into what you had to say, let's talk about what actually took place. So, I should actually search and see what the offering was for the job, but just recalling based off my memory alone, this person immediately wanted to schedule an interview with me, and I believe they actually tried to call me first, but the number that I have listed on my resume initially, I don't use my regular phone number for obvious reasons. I don't want weirdos fucking calling me. It's pretty standard in Japan for you to email people anyway. They shouldn't be calling your phone. In fact, the only time people ever call my phone is always a white person. It's always a foreigner that doesn't seem to understand how Japan works. I think it's also a way of trying to weed out candidates too, because normally a fresh candidate to Japan or someone that's not living here wouldn't have a Japanese phone number. So anyway... I use an alternative Skype number for my resume normally for personal reasons. I also don't bother to update my address on my resume most of the time either. But sometimes I do, especially if it's a job that I really want and I want to use the fact that I live close, you know, proximity to help me get that job. So, let's get back into it. And since you called me a professional, we're going to get the name of the company too. The name of the school is called Twinkle. Was it just Twinkle? I think it's just Twinkle. Yeah. So anyway, if I recall, I don't know what city the school is in. I think it was like in Yokohama or something. When I spoke to him over the phone, he acknowledged that he saw what my resume said on Gaijin Pop that I was asking for a salary basically of at least about 3.5 to 3, you know, 350 to 360,000 per month was my minimum asking that I basically had. He tells me after he calls me that he knows that the school is not going to give me that. That basically the most I'll probably get, just as the ad says, probably going to be about, you know, 300000 or whatever. But if I recall, the ad also says that it's negotiable. But maybe I'm wrong. All of these jobs are the same fucking thing. And let's just keep it real here. Since these schools seem to not understand, nobody gives a shit about your damn school. People work at these schools because they need money. The goal for foreigners here, just as you know this all too well, all too well Zach, we choose jobs based off of the pay, the ease of work, and the proximity, you know, between how far you know, is the commute going to be, basically. That's how we pick jobs. Nobody's passionate about working for you all slave companies, especially somebody that's been here for a long time. We've been there, done that, seen it. We know all of the crap, okay? That's just the way that it works. So, the first red flag that I had was when he tried to schedule like the time for us to talk. I missed his call or something like that happened. And when I called him back, it was a little bit later. He tells me that he was taking his lunch now because he wasn't expecting me to call him. Like, my nigga, it's only been like 20, 30 minutes. And you're a manager. Sorry that you're losing a few minutes of your precious lunch to talk to me on the phone. Do y'all need a new teacher or not? You want to lose 20 minutes of your lunch break? Or do you want to spend the next two weeks having a cover for what should be my position? I don't know, you choose. So, like, you know, he was talking, he sounded a little bit anal, like, I said call it anal for, like, asshole. It seemed a little bit, you know, irritable. But at the same time, I didn't get really a, necessarily a bad feel from him, but he didn't come off as being friendly. I could tell that he was one of those type of white people, so to speak. So, whatever. He was kissing my ass, and, oh, yeah, you have a lot of experience, blah, 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 like, yeah, like, this is perfect, this and the other. And then you go through all of that, and then you tell me, basically, yeah, we know that you want a decent wage, you know, for living in Tokyo, but, yeah, we're not going to offer that. Is that okay? What am I going to say, Josh? Or, I said Josh. What am I going to say, Zach? What the fuck am I going to say, Zach? I'm going to say, well, no, I have better options. What if I don't get another job? So it would be wise for me to just be okay, I'll go through and do this interview in my head, and if I get a better option, I'm going to turn you down and choose another job, which is what I ultimately ended up doing. 
So, we ended up scheduling an interview, and after we did that, he confirmed, you know, the time, date, whatever, um, with, I guess, the owner of the school, the principal, aka the Japanese bitch that doesn't do shit. He tells me that she's a bitch. You want your boss to know that shit? You tell me that she's a bitch. You don't call her a bitch, but you indirectly said it. You basically stress up the fact that I need to make sure that I come dressed up, even though it's a school that you're going to be dealing with children, which makes no sense. Why well, didn't they come dressed up, suit and tie, you know, business style? For a kindergarten fucking interview in Japan. Not the US, not your home country, in Japan. And you're not gonna pay me shit. That's something that always blew my mind. I think back to what it was like being in the US when I was working at JCPenney and Old Navy. The audacity to require your employees to wear business casual clothes when they don't even get paid a fucking business casual salary. I have to spend an entire paycheck to buy one outfit at your store. I'm gonna pay like $200 a week. Really, after two weeks of work. $200, $300. How the fuck do I buy a wardrobe with business casual clothes? Walmart shit is too expensive for me on this damn salary. And this is me without no damn kids. I'm spending like $15, $20 on transportation just to get to and from work, my bitch. So, like, yeah, it just blows my how out of touch these people are. Then the fact that these people will pay you pennies and they want you to stay loyal to their company. They don't want you to work for any other school. You're not allowed to, really. You're breaking your contract by doing that. You're not allowed to work any other school. Keep all of their trade secrets to them. Give them your entire day. Most of these people here are working, you know, anywhere from 8.30 to, you know, 6 p.m. or 9 to 6 or even like 10 to 8, you know, whatever. You're giving up your entire day to work for these slave... Why is my hair sticking up? These slave-ass schools and companies. And then their minds are blown when their turnover rate is high, when teachers leave, when teachers quit, when teachers use them for visa sponsorship... Why would anybody in their right cotton picking mind choose to stay at your company when you give them basically no benefits? Oh, don't even get me started on the benefits part. That's another story. In fact, I might have added that into this video. Yeah, I am going to add it into it. White people be, and, and Japanese people do sometimes too, but especially at the white management and whatnot, they want you to feel like they're doing you a big favor because they have pension, health insurance, etc. I'm like, I don't know what crappy school you worked at before you started your business or before you became manager. But almost every job I've had, in fact, I think all of them, even when I didn't want them to because I would have liked to have extra money to myself, they gave me those things. I'm sorry, but being a decent, normal, basic-ass company, giving 10 days of vacation or, you know, giving people, you know, company health insurance is not, oh, wow, what a great deal. No, it's, it's fucking not. Sorry, you worked at shittier companies, but that does not mean that your company is, you know, top tier now because you offer that. Yeah, you give me health insurance, and yeah, you're going to match my pension, but when you're only paying me $2,500 a month, or $3,000 a month, I'm experienced. <laughs> Nothing special. So anyway, yeah, then, um, what was I about to say? So you're telling me that you're not going to give me the salary that I asked for. So what do you think is going to immediately happen? This is something you should do as an employer. Just keep this in mind for yourself. I'm sorry for people that are looking for jobs. Just keep it real for employers out there. You should know this as an employer yourself. What did you do before you started your own business? If you want a certain salary or a certain lifestyle and all that you have available, something that's going to give you less than that lifestyle, less, less than that salary that you want, what are you going to always be doing while you're working that job? You will always be looking for the next best thing. Why? Because this job is not giving you the shit that you fucking need. We are living in fucking Tokyo, Japan. I'm living in central Tokyo. How the fuck am I going to survive on a $3,000 or $2,500 salary living in fucking Shibuya? Think to yourself. $3,600 is cutting it fucking close. It's fine. You can't offer that. But please understand. If your employee accepts that job and they get a better offer... They'd be the damn fool to stay at your company. In fact, the people that you get to work these shitty ass jobs that pay you pennies, not trying to hate on y'all, just keeping it real. It's almost always people from third world developing countries, even people from European countries, because despite how good their Japanese and or English is, most companies simply will not choose to hire them. And that is the reason why. They're not native English speakers, and it's bogus. That's the way it works. We're just keeping it real. I understand it. It's ma mainly for the client, because Japanese clients, customers, whatever, they have high expectations, and they've been tricked into believing that being a native English speaker makes you an English expert and makes you suddenly a good teacher. I understand the want for the English accent, so I'm not going to entirely knock it, but at the same time, I've met plenty of people that are from Europe and from the Philippines, etc., that make much better teachers than people that are from America or from the United Kingdom or from Canada, whatever. So, back on subject. Yeah, so 
The day comes up. I forgot what exactly happened at this point. I don't keep tabs on that shit. And did not go into the interview. And of course, my natural reaction was initially, let them know you're not going to be there. Which I will admit, fine. Doing the right thing. I could have done that. But let's also keep it real. I've done this more times than I can count. Where I needed to just, not even trying to cancel the interview. I just needed to reschedule it. Almost every job that you try to reschedule it, you trying to reschedule it is a red flag to them. And they'll decide, you know what, fuck it. You can't honor the interview time we had. We'd rather just not hire you at all. They simply don't get back to you. I recently interviewed for a job that was doing that same thing where they were bragging about how you know they offer health insurance and pension program, etc. And even although his ad said they're looking for both a full-time and part-time teacher. Now, I'm not going to lie, my demo lesson did not go as planned. But the main reason why was, I can't control the kids' react. The kids were sleepy. They didn't have any interest. When I, all I did was read a book for a few minutes. That was it. They didn't really want to participate. They were tired. It was awkward, because normally kids their age are normally more interactive. They more want to touch. They more want to help. You know, it's a pop-up book, whatever. It seemed like after he found out I was only interested in being a part-time teacher and being an assistant teacher, he lost all interest. So this nigga went from talking, this is another school my dad, this is Blossom, whatever, that name school. I don't normally drop school names, but I'm doing it with this shit. Because I'm giving you an example of unprofessionalism. And see how there's that double standard. So, they didn't tell me right away, like, oh, you know, you bombed your demo lesson. And I'm just assuming, I'm playing devil's advocate here, and assuming that my demo lesson didn't go good in their eyes. Okay. But let's assume that it didn't go good, okay? He told me that they let me know something about, you know, Friday, whatever. Friday comes. I don't hear shit. It's now been over a month. I have not heard nothing back from them. No closure whatsoever. I can just use my own brain and accept the fact I did not get that damn job. Now, the reverse wouldn't work. If they were to be offering me the job, I cannot ghost them for a month. Then I'd be unprofessional. They'd talk shit about me. Now, most companies don't say anything. If you don't get back to them, they'll get the hint. Okay, she's not interested. Or at best, number, oh, you know, we just wonder if you're still interested in the job. If you could please let us know, whatever. Which is dumb, because it's, it's just like with relationships. When I see, especially women here, I'm sorry, y'all foreign women be irritating with that shit. Please stop. Because some, a lot, not some of y'all, all of y'all bitches, <laughs> most of y'all, I should say. I say about 99% of y'all be older than I am and still doing petty shit like this. And it's like, if a dude is showing you that he doesn't care about calling you back, doesn't reply to messages, you don't need to send him a whole fucking paragraph about how he's going to miss your pussy and you're this. He don't give a shit about you. He wants you to be gone. You're crazy, bitch. You're just proving his point. Leave. Go. He don't give a fuck about you, okay? This is literally the exact same thing. If somebody if somebody cared about the job that you're offering them, they're not going to forget that this wonderful position is available. The reason why they're not getting back to you is because they don't want the fucking job or they found another job, which is the same situation. They don't want the job. So, and this is not the only time this happened. This is just the most recent situation I could think of. So, it's okay for you to not get back to me. For you to, and he actually gave me a deadline. It's not like he just told me, if you don't hear back from us on this day, then that means you're not hired. Or, we'll get back to you. No, 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 no. He said, we will let you know on Friday. Crickets. Nothing. Now, if I were to message or call him or email or whatever, then I'm the, you know, psycho, bat, bat shit crazy bitch, right? But it's okay for you to do that as an employer. Interesting. Just like as an employer, the, when you sign those contracts, even say it, it's okay for them to fire you at the drop of a hat for any fucking reason they choose. But you are not allowed to quit. They want 60 days notice, a replacement, a written formal not doing all that shit legally you ain't gotta do shit you are legally allowed to quit your job whenever you want to there's no consequence to it the only consequence that there might be is with your own employer like for example they could be bogus petty shit like keep your salary or whatever nobody gonna go through the whole process of suing you in court whatever so all that shit is just to scare you as a foreigner same thing goes in the u.s it's the right and professional thing to do but realistically why well, gotta give you notice when you can fire me because you don't like the fact that i don't know i came to work too early or came late one day you can get rid of me you can pay me late by a week or a month and I'm supposed to be okay with that shit and if I were to quit my job because of it then I'm in the wrong right oh what about the kids fuck them kids bitch you should have thought about the kids don't try to put that pressure on me if you cared about the kids you pay me enough to do so 
So anyway, back on subject. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, you told me you're not going to give me the salary that I want. You basically kind of scared me out of the interview because you told me that basically she's, he said this in his own words, but he essentially told me that the person that I'd be interviewing with is very judgmental about, you know, punctuality, which that's a little bit understandable, and about, you know, your attire, which again, they seem reasonable, like reasonable requests. But trust me, when you're getting this from a Japanese person, it's always unreasonable. Not to mention, you're working in an international environment. Being a hard ass and trying to keep your Japanese like qualities and shit does not work and this is why y'all always deal with high turnover rates nobody wants to work for a Japanese company they treat their employees like shit if you think working for a foreign company is bad work for a Japanese school yes there are really nice schools where they treat the staff well etc it does happen but generally speaking a lot of the time when you're working for a hard ass Japanese company you're dealing with you know Japanese women that have no husband and they take out their anger on their staff or the other way around some old geezer Japanese man just trying to make money super strict on everything there's no humanity involved with it and the problem with that is I can't think of the word geezer y'all know what the fuck I mean they don't give a shit about you and it's like you're dealing with people that are leaving their home country to build a life for themselves abroad which is difficult by itself we get no free time because we spend all of our time working we spend the holidays getting ready for these kids to make you know the moms and dads happy there's a lot of pressure put on us for everything the least you can do is pay us a decent salary and give us a little bit of leeway and flexibility with the way that we dress at work and especially something like a fucking interview what I'm wearing does not fucking matter, as long as it's appropriate for the interview. I shouldn't have to come dressed up in suit and tie and get there 20 minutes. All that stuff is unnecessary. You're not going to be ready when I get there 20 minutes beforehand. This is not a fashion show. The question is, can I do, can I do the job or not? Everything else does not matter. I'm not asking to show up to the job wearing cosplay or some shit, but I am saying wearing a little bit of a little bit, you know, a business casual outfit should be enough. That's it. And to be honest, that shouldn't even be needed. Because when you're working with these kids, what the fuck are you going to be wearing? You're not even going to be wearing business casual clothes at most schools. International schools, that is. You would normally be wearing a goddamn polo. And some jogging pants. Why the fuck do I need to come dressed up, suit and tie, wearing a dress and shit? To show you that I'm wearing an outfit that's too expensive for the salary that you're going to be giving me? To maintain? This is dumb. And on top of that, what do I get out of telling you that I'm not going to this interview? I get nothing. Two things are going to happen. Either one, you're still going to be upset because I'm like, oh, I scheduled this interview with you on this day, time, whatever. Bitch, unless you're a fucking retard, when one o'clock comes, you see that my ass is not there, and five minutes pass by, okay, the interview is canceled. Uh, Zach, my nigga, you are already at work. You're there. You're at work. We didn't have no interview planned at some five-star restaurant or some shit. Where you spent money, made reservations, drove down to some place. You were going to work anyway. That's what fucking happened. Oh my god, I'm so sorry that your schedule got thrown off by one fucking hour. God forbid you have extra time to do prep work. Or to go look through more resumes to find another person you can scam and trick into being underpaid by your company. And you want to talk about having the moral decency? Your school should have, Twinkle, should have the moral decency to give their teachers a livable fucking wage in the Kanto region. That salary is enough for a single person, which technically I am. But not enough for my experience. Most of the people trying to work these damn jobs are not living by themselves. They have a spouse. They have children, like you probably do, Zach, because you've been here for X amount of years. Don't play that shit at me talking about moral decency and you want to call me selfish or whatnot. That's selfish. Did you think about why I didn't go to the interview? You don't even know what happened to me. I could have had an accident. There could have been an emergency. There could have been a death. But immediately, I should give a damn about what I did to your fucking schedule. That's some professional. You talk about moral decency. I've never in my damn life had somebody call me selfish, X, Y, and Z. And then you texted it to me. You didn't even email it to me. What a fucking retard. I'm going to share your picture in this video, you idiot. But yeah, talk about <laughs> how the moral decency to cancel. I took time out of my busy. Nobody cares about your damn day. You're a manager. You're getting paid more than what I am. In fact, the other reason why they're probably going to give me the salary that I want, the salary I was requesting is probably what he's getting paid because they're underpaying their staff. He's probably either getting 3600 or close to that amount. 
he's been in Japan for what he said 15, 20 years or whatever because I read all the shit on their damn website that's not my problem Zach welcome to management that's how life goes you know what's, not, you know what's also going to happen people quit and they don't always give notice yeah I've never had a manager send me a damn text message and then death not insult me. What do you call me? Call me self something else. Selfish and immature. Yeah, I'm immature because I don't give a damn to give you notice that doesn't benefit me. Because what normally happens is when you cancel an interview, you say that, you know, you're not going to continue with the interview, which I have normally done in the past. What happens? They don't say anything. They're not going to reply, reply like, oh, well, you know, thank you for letting us know. I've literally had jobs where I told them that I wasn't going to do the interview. Oh, well, it, I wish you had told me sooner. Whatever. I gave you closure. And you knew before the interview took place. In fact, even if I tell you after the interview was going to take place, you are at work already. And if you're at home, even better. You're already getting paid. You are at work regardless of whether I come to that interview or not. I'm not on a payroll. I'm not required to say shit to you. And then you dummies don't realize when you do dumb shit like this, Zach, when you say shit like this to people, you're also making sure that when you do this, you're giving a bad name for your school. Because now I made a whole fucking video about your company. And on top of that, moving on and thinking about the future, anybody that comes to me and is looking for international school, I will tell them don't put your child inside this damn company. Because if the management is just unprofessional and rude with how they talk to potential candidates and teachers, I can only imagine what they treat the staff like at the school or the students like at the school. He's not even trying to pretend to be professional with dealing with me. In fact, like I said, my first red flag was when I um, initially had the phone screening that he did with me. And he had my dad to bring up the fact, yeah, I'm taking my lunch trip. Basically, I, can't, I think I actually said sorry to him too. See, white, white people one-on-one. White people one-on-one. That dumb manipulation tactic. Where it's supposed to be, I'm, I'm unprofessional enough to tell you how I'm really feeling, really thinking, me completely open on He's been in Japan for 20 years. You should have enough common sense to realize, yes, even though this is going on in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, this bitch is ruining my day. My lunch break is to be at this time. Now I got to do this interview during my lunch. You don't share that information with me. I don't need to know that. You answer your phone and we're talking now. If you don't want to talk because you're having your lunch because Mr. Zachary can't handle to not have his lunch on time, then don't answer the fucking phone. Or you can answer and say, I'm having my lunch break right now. I tried to call you earlier. Can you please call back at X time? Or can we reschedule for whatever? That's what you fucking say. You don't say, yeah, I can have my lunch. <laughs> I don't give a shit, bitch. And if you want such a fucking shitty ass school, then guess what? You would have staff. You wouldn't need me. Now, of course, the shit excuse was I had a teacher that's allegedly leaving next, you know, spring because she's retiring. But they said they have two positions. They were looking for somebody that could start right away. Hmm. Why do you need somebody that could start right away? Oh, it wouldn't happen to me because I don't know. Somebody fucking quit before their contract ended. <laughs> it, it just blows my mind how their brains function. They want you to care about their school, to care about what they're doing, their business side of things. And it doesn't affect you. You're responsible for time management. You're responsible for hiring. You're responsible for scheduling. You're also responsible for being mature enough and recognizing shit happens. Emergencies happen. People choose other jobs. You don't need closure. Someone not showing up to the interview is enough for you to say, okay, they must not be interested in the job. They don't want the job. Life goes on. You have plenty of other candidates to choose from. I know because guys and Pot tells me. People want the top candidates. They want people with the most experience, the people that are the youngest at the same like there's so many contradictions here in Japan. People want young teachers to work for their company. But then they want you to be very experienced. Then they want you to be able to give up all of your personal time and have no social life, not get married, not have kids, and be willing to move close to their school so that they can pay you the least amount of money for transportation. Then they want you to stay at their company for years, even though they're only going to offer you a six-month to one-year contract. Then they want to give you no vacation time so you can't even enjoy your vacation because if you choose to go back to your home country, it's going to take about two days between going there and back automatically. I got to plan it around when you say I can take vacation. 
Do y'all see the crazy shit that you're requiring and requesting of people? Then you act so shocked. Why are teachers quitting our school? What's going on? How unprofessional. How immature. Do you know what happens when we do tell you like how I just said? What happens when we tell you that we don't want the job anymore? You're still pissed off either way it goes. Get over yourself, Zachary. You are the most unprofessional, immature manager I ever saw. In fact, you're a prime example of why Japanese schools need to stop hiring people and promoting them based off of their damn looks. Typical blonde hair, blue eyed white guy, learn Japanese, been here for a while, immediately you become manager just on that alone. You're not professional. You're immature. You've been here this damn long and you still act that way? Your response to me not canceling the interview formally is what I would expect from a 20 year old man that got thrown up into a management position. You are at least about 40 years old, I'm assuming, based on how long you've been here. And that's how you react? You're the immature and unprofessional one. Yes, it would be nice if I told you I wasn't going to go to the interview. That is not required of me. I don't get money for telling you that. I might not even get a thank you for letting me know, which normally that's what happens. That's the reason why I didn't tell you, Zach. It's not worth my damn fucking time. Anybody with a fucking brain could put two and two together. You didn't have any interview scheduled somewhere else. If you did, I most certainly would let you know because I don't stand people up. But at your job, all you were expecting was for me to walk through the door at 1 o'clock. You weren't going to have anything formally together. You'd be playing and doing shit with the kids like how all schools are. And I'd end up having to start the interview, you know, several minutes late. If not exactly on the dot, despite the fact that I'm expected to come early, which is stupid. Then I'm going to be getting judged based off how my outfit looks and dumb shit that we already talked about over the phone. Either give me the job or don't. If you're wondering, oh, what's this to me? Whatever. I, my last job that was paying me over $3,600, I never did a demo lesson. I did one interview. One interview. No demo lesson. No dressing up. No bullshit. And they hired me. Y'all companies be doing all this special, unnecessary shit, and y'all still can't keep teachers. And the teachers that y'all do keep, like that chick, I think she's in the Philippines. Y'all keep people that have no options. I got options, my nigga. I'm not stuck at your damn shitty-ass fucking school. You are unprofessional. You are selfish. You are immature. You're too busy trying to get your damn sound and only you trying to get people to feel sorry for you. <laughs> Talking about selfish and immature. Get the fuck out of here. Moral decency. Give your teachers a livable, you know, fucking salary to live off of. That's moral decency. Give them shorter hours, too. And freedom and privacy. You know, shit the uh, teachers actually fucking want. <laughs> These schools treat you like shit. <laughs> yeah, I thought that stuck on more moral decency. Immature. Unprofessional. <gasps> <laughs> I laughed so hard reading that. I wish I saw that message earlier, but I just had to make a video on that part. But, and then even right now, what a school that I'm actually talking about that I was um, about to work at. They, these schools go through so much trying to avoid sponsoring your visa, which is so stupid. I talked about this before, like the Catch-22, where it's like, you need a valid, a valid work visa to get a job. But you need a job to get a valid work visa. And the only way you can have a valid work visa, especially with these schools, they want you to have at least three months on, if not more. The only way you can get a valid work visa while looking for another job means that you would have had to quit your current job. Or previous job, whatever. You had to have quit. Which means that you violated your contract. And that's not going to go well over an interview. So you see the catch there? So, okay, you want teachers to work for your school. You don't want to offer visa sponsorship right away. But the only way you can get away with not offering visa sponsorship right away will require your teacher in most circumstances to have had to broken their contract. Because if you have a visa that's good for three or five years, more than likely either you've been continuously working at the same company for that long or you signed a contract that was for three or five years or whatever. That's normally the way it goes. Normally your visa is going to be based off of how long you have, you know, your con how long your contract is good for. Unless you have a spouse visa or PR or some shit like that, which most people here do not. So it's like, okay, 
you judge me for leaving my job but at the same time you need people that quit their job in order for them to work for you because especially during this whole pandemic nobody was allowed to come into the country so you're strictly going based off of teachers that are already here meaning that you need people that are willing to quit their jobs and change okay D do you see that how that makes no sense dumb shit like that <laughs> So, yeah, they go through so much to avoid sponsor interviews. It's like, this company right now <sighs> made me so upset. I'm not going to get the name of this place. I'll do them a favor. I didn't think I was going to need sponsor from them at first, but it turns out that I did. Because the person that was going to ask sponsor my visa, I decided not to work for them anymore, which means I need to cancel my application. And so I didn't go to a ton of detail with them, which I didn't feel like I needed to. I just want to look like my visa is not going to, you know, be approved. My application is going to get canceled because I'm not going to work for that company anymore. I'm choosing to work for you guys, basically. So I need you guys sponsor my visa. And I'm like, oh, no, no, you don't have to do it right away. Like, you know, um, you know, we could change your visa basically next year when it's time for it to be renewed again. And so I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you're not understanding. It's not going to get renewed. My application is going to be canceled because I decided that I don't want to work for that company I decide I want to work for you guys and then instead of just messaging back oh yeah sure we can get on the you know application process because I asked the direct questions like can you all give me the information that I need so I can go to immigration you know tomorrow get all of this stuff sorted out and so instead she messaged me back and instead of just saying directly why didn't you mention him before you signed the contract? Instead, it became, I talked to this other Japanese staff member that's appointed to work with, you know, the paperwork and documentation. And they asked me, they are wondering why you didn't tell us this before you signed the contract. I really hate people do shit like that. If you have a question and you're concerned about something, tell me directly, bitch. Don't do that bullshit with me. We try to pass off the blame or the hard questions of someone else that this way. You can seem innocent and pure like you're a good person. But then my anger is directed toward this person because you understand, but they want to know why you didn't tell them. Because I'm a fucking brain. And when you tell people beforehand, oh, I don't have a visa. What happens? They choose another applicant. Because every country, every country, every company has this dumb idea where they don't want to be the one to sponsor your visa because they're afraid of being used for visa sponsorship. The only reason why you'd have that fear is if you're a shitty employer. Because that means that you've had people that have worked for your company before that chose to jump up and leave your shitty ass company for a better school. Otherwise, why are you afraid? You should be confident that your teachers are going to stay. Not to mention, it don't cost schools shit. All they have to do is give over some sensitive legal information, such as, you know, their taxes and how many employees they have, etc. That's it. It's literally printing stuff off from the computer, handing it to you, you go to immigration, you are the one that has to pay the $40, you are the one that has to pay the $10, $20 ever cost tr for transportation for you to get to and from immigration, buy your, you're the one spending money to get there, you're the one spending money to get the visa, you're the one spending your time, they don't have to do any of that shit, none of it at all, it's a fucking joke, and very insulting. Especially schools actually have the audacity. There have literally been schools, thank God they didn't sponsor my visa, that actually require you <laughs> to have one of the staff members, like one of the management, the like HR people, come with you to immigration so that they can submit the paperwork with you so they can make sure that you're not looking at their sensitive legal documents. All you're really saying to me is that you don't trust me. That doesn't look good to me as, as an employer. I understand why you want to keep it confident. I understand it. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, when you consider the fact there's much bigger, better companies than yours to work for that don't do that shit, that's an insult. Like, I think Hama Kids is one of the places that do that. Was it Hama Kids? It was somewhere else that does it, too. Um, I can't remember what it was. One of those dispatch companies that also do, like, it's, all, it's so much weird. No, it wasn't the dispatch company, because I did that on my own. So, I think it was Hama Kids. But, yeah, it just really like, blows my mind and amazes me how <laughs> they have the audacity to be afraid of you using them for a visa. And it's like, okay, so you can make money off of me and use me to make more profits for your school. Because they don't pay these teachers 2500 3000 even dollars or whatever, $3,000 or less per month. And then they work you like a slave. You can practice no freedom, no vacation days unless they approve of it, unless they want you to have it. So my nose is stuffy. <laughs> they have all these little dumb rules, etc. for you. They're making a ton of money off of you because while they're only paying you $2,500, $3,000, the, look at the school's website. The tuition they're charging is ridiculous. Look at how many kids they have. Count them fucking heads out the classroom. They're getting thousands of dollars off of those kids. Some of these schools cost $25,000 plus per year and they have hundreds of students. Hundreds, okay? With a skeleton crew of teachers. 
I've never worked at a school that formerly had substitute teachers. There's always been maybe a floater, or they'll have like an admin member that'll cover classes, but they almost never have like formal subs. They have the minimal, least amount of staff possible to run their schools. And that's true they take out the anger on you and you want to take vacation time or when you quit or, you know, whatever else happens. That's the reason why. They don't want to take maternity leave, nothing. That's the reason why. You give teachers almost no benefits. Or you give them benefits in disguise, basically. Or whatever you want to call that. For example, a job that I recently worked at too. They go, oh, we give you all this vacation time, blah, blah. It's like, okay, but that's what you chose to have for vacation time. These are days that I decided that I wanted not to mention, okay, what if the time I want to take off from work doesn't land on these days? You're basically bullying me to not take any off days. No sick days. No, I literally had a job that just said that. No sick days, no vacation days, basically, outside of those days. So sure, we get a lot of vacation time throughout the year, but it's like, okay, what if I want to go see my family in November and not December? What if I want to go see my parents, you know, during Golden Week? And they don't really get Golden Week off. So it's like, okay, do you see what I'm trying to say? This is stupid. The whole purpose of vacation days is so that I can take vacation. If you're choosing the days for me, it's not really vacation, it's just an off day. So, uh, the money is not the issue. We don't. I don't know about you all, but I don't give a shit about having the money for my vacation days. I want the time while having the security of my job. I understand that a job ain't gonna, ain't gonna pay me for a whole fucking month off from work. But at the same time, it's okay. Like you're telling me, I can't even take these days off without jeopardizing my job. That's not fair. So. So much more to be said. All I gotta say is, yeah, dumb shit like this. If you're ever working at a company, please don't be like Zach. Use your fucking brain. Yes, I understand it's upsetting because you were expecting this person to come and now you have the embarrassment having to explain to the manager. Oh, remember that applicant that I screened? Yeah, she decided to not let me know and she's not going to show up for the interview. Yeah. But the way that you're talking lets me know how your boss talks to you. And it lets me know how you deal with your students, your customers, that you're really thinking inside your mind. You're a professional. You're selfish. You're busy worried about how, how it affected your day, your lunch, your whatever, your plans. I don't work for your company. You got paid, Zach. Boo fucking who? You got paid, okay? I did not get paid. I'm not even being offered the salary that I want. This is not going to help me survive here. I want to have a family. I want to get married. I want to have children. Getting paid a lousy $2,800 or $3,000 salary per month ain't going to fucking cut it. Especially not for having to go all the way to Yokohama. You all want experienced teachers. You want young teachers. You want teachers to have all of the shit, but then you all don't want to pay for them. You don't want to give them the time that they want off from work. You don't want to give them freedom, creativity, flexibility to do what they want to with their classrooms, with the curriculum. And then you expect this loyalty from them. You don't want to sponsor visas. I'm not saying this about uh, Twinkle in particular. I don't know about the visa part. We didn't get there yet. But it amazes me how their brain works. Everything is just about how this affects you. You ever thought about how it affects me? Oh, no, that, that would make too much sense. I'm being so... Bitch, of course I should be selfish. This is me. I'm not a fucking school. I'm not a company. I'm an individual. So, yes, I am thinking about myself, my own best interest. I'm doing what works best for me. Why? Because I am single. I am one person. And when I'm on my deathbed, when I'm sick in the hospital, are you going to come pay my bills? Are you going to come visit me? No, the fuck you're not. You're not going to care. You're going to be busy looking for the next teacher. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm looking for the next best job. You are not it. So, so much more can be said. I'm done. Oh, like I say, <laughs> I just find it hilarious. I've never had nobody ever send me a text message at all. And definitely not one basically insulting me and being unprofessional rude to me. You are immature and selfish for not caring enough to cancel. No, Zach. You are immature and selfish and stupid and unprofessional for sending me a damn text message, you idiot, because now I've proven what you fucking said to me. <laughs> It'd be a lot harder to prove this conversation took place on the phone, but your dumbass actually sent it to me by text message. I should look up your company so I can show inside the video right now. Let me look up their school and see what the salary was they were offering to. I got time today, Zach. I got time. My nose all stuffy. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So this is the school, Twinkle Kids. This is the company right there. Let's look at the staff. 
And see, I don't normally be petty shit like this, but you're not gonna insult me, my nigga. Uh, we don't do that shit. Here he is, Mr. Zach. There he goes, guys. Talk about unprofessional. That piece from Boston that explains he went to school in San Francisco. Yep, he came to Japan 22 years ago, so since 2000. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. He said he's been okay. He's been teaching for 19 years. <laughs> and it's funny. He he has like the stereotypical entitled white guy like look that I would expect. Like, look at him, y'all. And so again, like. Looking at him, he seems like a pretty like normal white dude, nothing special. But it's like when I was talking to him, I could hear that he was like a little bit pissed off, like in his voice. Like he, he tried to make it sound nice because like he was trying to focus on the fact that he was interested in my resume. As, as he said himself, that's like a great fit for the school. I was very experienced. I, I was exactly what they were looking for. But it's like you're not exactly what I'm looking for. You're not gonna give me the hours that I want. Not gonna get the vacation time that I want. Not gonna get the salary that I want. More importantly, so it's like why you said it yourself. I'm very experienced. Why would someone with my experience say, you know what, fuck it. I guess I'll just be underpaid for a year or two. Or really, they want somebody to stay long term. They want somebody to stay there for years. Because that's the other funny thing, too. They'll ask you, how long do you plan to stay in Japan? You only give me a contract for six months to a year. So why does it matter if I plan to stay for 10 years if you're not going to give me a 10-year contract based off of what I said? What they're really trying to do is see, we want to find somebody that's willing to do shit that we can't do. Because if I say I'm going to be there for five years or 10 years or whatever, they're not going to say, oh, great, we'll give you a 10-year contract. No. They're not going to trust me. I'm still going to get a one-year contract or six months. They're going to do probation for three months, whatever. They do all of that bullshit with you. And don't even get me starting a probation thing. You're already giving me a low salary, and then you're going to make my salary even lower. And now, I have to accept this contract where I'm basically gambling. So, I'm going to I'm gonna choose to work for your company for $25 or $2,400 per month, or even worse, an hourly salary of just $15 an hour. Then I have to trust and believe that if I try my hardest, just maybe I can negotiate my salary up to $3,600, which let's face it, we're not going to get that. I'm going to, you know, try my hardest to get a randomized salary that you get to decide whether I'm worth that much or not. Now, if that's not unfair, I don't know what is. Would you accept a job like that? And most Japanese people that are, you know, hiring you, they've never worked for a company like that before. They were given a salary at the start, and that was their salary for the year. They didn't do no probation period for no damn three, four months. This shit they do to foreigners because they don't trust you. And so the reason why you don't trust foreign staff is because you mistreat them. Give them a good salary to start with. Give them good vacation time to start with, and you won't have that issue. Every time I've ever worked at a good company, staff never quit in the middle of the school year. It just doesn't happen. They stay for at least that year, or at the very least for six months. Anytime they have a high turnover rate, and you see a school constantly posting ads for their school, that is the reason why. Anytime you see a job that has a salary that does not increase, that is the reason why. It's a shit company. And they just don't seem to recognize, hmm, maybe the problem is us. Nope, instead it's so bad teachers, bad foreigners. They don't have partner with the Japanese students. No, 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 no. You're mistreating them. And unlike Japanese people, we know how to speak up. We know that we deserve better and can get better and want more. And so we leave. So, I'm done. I can go on forever. But, again, I understand where he was coming from initially. Yes, of course. Who doesn't like closure? Everybody likes it. But as a manager from a business perspective, you don't expect it. You don't name call your candidates, even if they deserve it. Even if I were to have insulted you, you know, you don't do that type of shit back in return. That's dumb. And if after you send it by text message or the email, it was also petty and stupid too. So it made me regret giving you my real phone number. So I'm done. That's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. Zach. Fuck you, fuck Twinkle, and no, I don't feel sorry and remorse for it. In fact, your behavior showed me exactly why you weren't worth telling that I wasn't going to be there. Because imagine what your response would have been. You would have still said, look, if you knew you were going to accept this job, but she told me that over the phone, you would still be a smart ass anyway. This is the reason why I don't bother doing that shit for white people. So, y'all, y'all just so funny. It amazes me. <laughs> I'm supposed to give a damn about the fact that you put aside 30 minutes or an hour of your day when you're already at work. You didn't come into work for this interview. And if you did, I don't give a shit. You're getting paid. In fact, you're getting a salary that I wanted to have more than likely. And you stupid for working at that company because you get paid more for managers somewhere else, I'm sure. So, <laughs> uh, like, like, I'm supposed to feel sorry for you. I'm sorry, but I, I have no remorse. I, I do not feel bad for the fact that some employer put aside an hour of their fucking time. When we all know damn well y'all mass interviewing anyway. I wasn't the only candidate that you had in mind. Y'all interviewing everybody and their mom. And that's probably the best option that y'all had out of the people at that time. 
because let's face it it's hard to come by americans and normally they require more money and normally when you do come across them they don't want to work you know for a company for years and years and years especially when it's been here as long as i am normally when foreigners have been in japan for a long time they don't accept teaching positions they get burnt out from it and they want to do other stuff or especially a woman in my situation you know they're married they have children etc they don't want a full-time job so <laughs> you have very limited options when it comes to native speakers especially when you want somebody that has that experience because even if they do um stay in japan by the time they get to that level of experience they already have a family etc they're not looking for full-time work so <laughs> and then especially now in yokohama so yeah Josh, I mean, Josh, I can't really call you Josh. Zach, you need to understand your frustrations be kept inside of your head. You've been here for 19, you know, 22 years, okay? You're old enough to understand that. You don't need to tell people everything that you're thinking, everything that's going on inside your mind. The best closure is sometimes silent. You don't need somebody to directly tell you, hey, I'm not going to go to the interview. You can use your brain. They're not replying to my messages. They're not replying to my calls. Maybe she's not interested in the job. You can be mad and secretly think whatever you want to about me. That's cool. But as a manager... As a business, you make your school look bad when you talk down to staff like that. Or potential candidates like that. Even worse. Because I'm not even a customer of your business. I'm not a customer. I'm not, I'm not even an employee at your school. So you should be talking to me as though I'm a customer. You want your school to look good. Now that you said that to me, now I'm making this YouTube video. Now hundreds of people are going to hear what I have to say about you and your school. You make your whole company look bad. I wouldn't want to send my school off, my school, I wouldn't want to send my kid off to a school that treats their staff like that, or job candidates like that. It would be unprofessional if you didn't even tell me that you put aside time. You made it even worse by adding the immature and selfish part. You're immature for sending that damn text message. You're selfish for only thinking about how this affected your day. That ever crossed your mind? You have no idea what went through my mind before I decided to cancel the interview. Because I actually had to think about it for a minute, Josh. Josh, Zach, fuck it. All y'all white people are the same. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, yeah, think about that next time. Everything's not about you and your little lunch break. And your valuable one hour where you could have scheduled an interview. If you did have that time, you wouldn't have been wasting your time trying to hire me to begin with. Don't play yourself, my nigga. So... <laughs> you literally gave me the laugh that I needed. I was looking. I was actually looking through my phone because I was trying to find where I got like the email for my uh, reservations for a Christmas dinner. And when I saw that message, I literally laughed. I was like, I don't recall getting a notification for that. So, yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm doing your favor. I'm not going to dox your number, but yeah, you're dumb. And I'm sorry for anybody that chooses to work for your company. And, yeah, I know my work. I know that I can get better pay. I know that I can have a better manager than you for sure. And I don't want to work for a company like that where you have a randomized lunch break or where, you know, you don't really have privacy when you have lunch or where you have, you know, your boss is an asshole and it's judgmental about the clothes that you wear. It's like, I don't have time for that type of bullshit. So, you didn't do a great job selling your company to me between the salary being crap and basically making it sound that management is going to be, you know, bitch-like. And the fact that I don't get a set in stone lunch break, that's not appealing to me either. As somebody that's experienced, that's been here for you years too no thanks so yeah <laughs> somebody that's been in japan for 22 years and it knows japanese like i'm assuming that you do you should know better than to speak to me like that so that was not very japanese of you mr white man so sorry colonizer chris i didn't think about you i didn't think about your valuable lunch break and how you could have used your valuable one hour to do something else not like you waste the whole hour anyway you probably waited for about 15 minutes and realized oh she's not going to come because it only took you 30 minutes to send me that damn message so you didn't waste your whole time you knew it wasn't going to come at some point before that you were already at work nothing changed we didn't have some sort of five-star restaurant, you know, booked where we're going to sit down and have lunch and meet with the CEO. That's not what happened. Relax, my nigga. You work for a shit company. You manage a shit company. You're a grown fucking man, and you work at an international school. And to my understanding, you're not even, like, the manager, like, the owner of the school. You're a loser, okay? You're immature. You're stupid. You're unprofessional. And that is the reason why you are not worth my time to even tell I'm not going to go. Because if you thought about things from my perspective and my experience, any time I've done that, it does not pay off. I can count the time somebody has said, thank you for letting me know. But nine times out of ten, either no reply or wish you told me sooner. I wish you, you know, did whatever. I would have interviewed somebody else. 
okay, I, I let you know. I gave you closure that I'm not going to interview for this job anymore. Would you rather have not known? People like that make you choose not to do so in the future. You ever been ghosted by a Japanese girl? <laughs> I can only imagine what your response was to that. Fucking psycho, crazy ass manager, so. Fuck you, bitch. Alright, I'm done, y'all. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching. Sorry to get all this stuff out. If you, know this video, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, leave a comment down below. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Comic95. I have a Snapchat and a TikTok at Comic the Savior and a blog at Comic95.com. Thanks so much for listening, thank you for watching. And yeah, um, if you have any other video ideas you'd like for me to, things like for me to talk about or discuss, please leave a comment down below. And I'll also be honest, I'll leave the door open. Tell me what you all think myself for what I said. Do you think I was in the right? Was I in the wrong? Go ahead. It's okay. We, we can agree to disagree. It's cool. I want to hear what you all have to say about this. But do you hear where I'm coming from? Like, these schools expecting you to do all this shit for them. Well, they don't do any of that for you. I got to give you 60 days notice, but you can fire me when I come in just because you're not having a good day. Or I have to let you know when I'm not going to attend an interview, which that seems a little more understandable. But again, when you see it from my perspective, anytime I've done this, they either don't reply to you at all, or they reply and get angry about it. It's like, I told you hours before it's going to start. You're already at work anyway. Nothing changed in your day. If I cancel the interview even the day before, what are you going to do? Find somebody that's going to interview for that exact time slot? It's not going to happen. At best, somebody that would have preferred the time that I had, and I had to schedule their interview for tomorrow, or for later that day, instead of having an interview that day. Ooh, big fucking whoop de doo whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's not the end of the world. So... <laughs> These people like they drove somewhere to interview with you and pay for some expensive restaurant or some shit. So whatever. Leave your comment down below. I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Bye.